Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to yet another chess engine tutorial. We'll be focusing on generating white knight moves in this tutorial. And before I get started, I should mention a couple things I've done. One, I've implemented our white bishop method into white rooks and white queens with just a couple slight modifications. They pretty much all look identical, except for a couple really small changes. And I've also added them to the entire list that our uh, possible moves white uh, produ method produces. And one other thing I've added is a white knight method. And it will, again, take occupied and, of course, white knights. And I have implemented it by just pretty much copying the uh, uh, white bishop or any of the others and making that default modification of changing the parameter to white knight, and the rest has stayed the same. Um, with one exception, possibilities I have a zero, because now we have to figure out what are all the possibilities that a white knight can move. Well, I have here a little uh, uh, board here. This is a bit board, and you'll notice that uh, assuming the rook is on this square here, I believe that is a F3, then all the ones depict the places that that knight can move. And I've taken this bit board and turned it into a number and stored it in knight span. Knight span. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this bit board and shift all the bits over to wherever the knight is. So if we shift the bit over to, for instance, this spot right here, then we will uh, be able to, all the ones will depict where the knight can move in that location. So we just need to shift this bit board around in our white knight. So when we first come up with possibilities, uh, normally we would have set it to uh, maybe uh, D and anti-D moves or uh, something like that, but now we have to do something a little different. First, we need to know which way do we shift it, because when we shift, we can shift bits over, but uh, you can't shift bits over by negative in order to make it go the other way. You actually have to have a different uh, shift operator. So the first thing we need to say is an if statement. If and we'll deal with I location, this is location of the uh, knight right now, equals, if it equal, if it is, sorry, greater than 18, then we shift it one way, and else we shift it the other way. Now, which way do we shift it? Well, it works like follows. Uh, possibilities uh, equals, and then we take our knight span and we shift it to the left by i location minus, of course, 18, because we're only shifting it over by the difference that it is moved. And then we have the same thing, except we shift it over the other way, and we reverse this whole I location minus 18, and say 18 minus, oops, 18 minus I location. This way we're shifting it over in the correct uh, direction. And then you have to realize that pieces wrap around. For instance, if I were to shift this entire uh, board over two, you would have ones appearing in places like this, ones over here. And that is, of course, uh, not supposed to happen. So we have to basically say, if we're shifting over to the right, then eliminate everything in files A and B on the left-hand side in this scenario. So then what we do here is we'll have this other if statement, and we'll say if I location, uh, and modulus 8 is less than 4. If it is less than 4, whoops, then possibility 
uh, and equals uh, file, and I have file gh. I've already created these two, file a, b, and gh, way at the top, these static longs. Um, so we have to say and equals file h, uh, or not file h, my bad there, not file h, and uh, not white pieces, and not white pieces. This way we're doing two things at once. We're getting rid of these file gh, and we're removing uh, the possibility of the knight taking out its own pieces. And then we add, of course, the else statement, which is the opposite of, so it'll be file a, b instead. And that should produce the correct possibilities. So if we were to uh, uh, run this whole thing, uh, the first thing I would suggest is to try printing off this possibility. So we would get, uh, whoops, not sure where I'm typing here. Um, all right. So if we were to put in uh, draw bitboard and then possibility, not occupied. There we go. Put in possibility and then stop it there. And we will run it. We should get as the first item, if we look at our output, two spots represented by P's. And if I continue going, we should get another board representing the other two places that a knight should move. That is perfect. Um, next thing we should do is do a couple, uh, I should mention one thing. We know that our uh, and not white pieces is working because otherwise uh, the knight would have taken out these pawns in front of the queen and king. Uh, if I were to add one more knight, let's say, uh, let's check if it can take out... Uh, enemy pieces. So if I added a knight here, and then if we added our little statement to find out how many moves were returned in the end, we would have, we'll again create an int uh, test, we'll call it, and we'll say list.length divided by 4. Put a little uh, stopper there for the debugging. How many possibilities should there be? Well, there should be two for each of the bottom two knights. That makes a total of four. And this knight should have full access to all eight locations. So we should get a total of about 12 move possibilities. So test should be equal to 12. We'll test this out. And we have test equal to 12. This is a pretty good indicator that we have set everything up. Um, the method is going to be pretty much the same for uh, moving around a king knight, or a, a, a white knight, a king, sorry, a white king. Uh, the only difference is instead of dealing with the knight span, we will be working with the uh, king span, which I've already written up as 460039. All right. Until next time, enjoy Java.